All right. Well, I haven't done a uh, tutorial in a long time, so I thought with uh, Avatar being out and everyone being all gaga about 3D again, which who knows if it'll stick around, but that'd be great for us if it did, uh, I would do a quick tutorial on how to make a animation in Cinema 4D rendered out in After Effects so that we're using 3D glasses to actually see our 3D stuff. So um, I'm Steve, or on the interwebs, known as Superfraud sometimes. Um, I will uh, guide you through this. So here we go. Uh, the scene I'm using, I'm just using the uh, Stay Puft Marshmallow Man character that I, use, that I created and put on uh, c40models.com for free, uh, available for download, um, just because I never really get to use him, and he's kind of cool. And so as you can see, oh, look. Look how awesome he is. The awesomeness is is everlasting. So we want to see this guy in 3D. So the quickest thing that, or the first thing we got to do is we got to create a camera. I've already got one, but uh, because of the whole concept of 3D being stereoscopic, uh, you need two. So let's take a look at our scene real quick, and then we can go over how to create the second camera. Uh, the first camera here, as you can see, it's not really moving. Let's do. It, I think we should do a little bit of animation so that you can see more of the depth. Uh, it's, so it doesn't look so flat. Maybe do like a quick orbit. I don't know about orbiting necessarily, just the, for time's sake. Maybe we'll just pan across. So let's do that first, and then we'll create our second camera. Uh, so I'm going to select our camera. Uh, just go to this first frame here. We're not going to do all these uh, keyframes. We only need, I'll just do 90. That, that's good enough. Uh, so for the first frame, bam, that's good. I'll go to the last frame. Oh, that's interesting. And uh, I'll go to about right here, and that works for me. Let's see how f Ooh, that works out. I'm not sure why it was updating all silly like that, but who cares? It's working now. So uh, all we got to do, the whole uh, idea behind how far apart the camera should be and that sort of thing, uh, is based on the distance uh, between the camera and the closest object to the camera. Now I know that can change if you have an animated camera. Uh, I haven't monkeyed around enough with uh, moving cameras to know if that makes a huge difference or not, and we're not going to get into that. Uh, so let's just take a look here. The camera that we've got right now, best way to check the distance is you can select the camera, which, which we've got, uh, and then you can go to just your move tool, and you can grab on to the target and then just kind of move it up to the front of your object. So it's about there. And, and it's going to change, and if you go to the depth tab in your camera, it's going to update the distance of that target. So if I move it here, as you can see, that number is changing. So approximately, we're looking at right here, uh, 1249. So I'll just say 1250. And the uh, equation is it's 1 30th, 1 30th of that distance is the distance in X that you want your other camera. So because I'm a math genius, not really, I've got another computer next to me that I'm going to type in uh, 1250 divided by 30, it equals, I'm going to round it up to 42 because that's the meaning of life and 42 is yes, anyway. Uh, make a new camera, so go object, scene camera and now we've got that creates a camera exactly where my other camera is and so I'm gonna now make that a child of the camera that we're looking through so that they stay the, the second camera keeps the animation they stay together and now what we want to do is change the X of this camera 42 because uh, if you get the coordinates right now because it's uh, a child of that it just says zero so I also like this camera because I want it to move to the right. I don't know if that really makes a difference either, but that's what I've been doing. So we want to do 42. So there we go. Now you can look at this camera and this camera. Got a decent little offset. So now the fun begins. Essentially, you have to render it out twice because the way that 3D stereoscopic is working, and this is true of uh, the red green. Uh, or the uh, polarized glasses. Uh, the only difference is on the red-green glasses, um, the red and green obviously filter out the images for each eye, whereas polarized, uh, you don't have any of that color problem. Um, 
but each each is using two separate images simultaneously. And we'll go into detail a little bit more about how that works without having a $20,000 monitor with the red green stuff here in a moment. But uh, we will have to render out each camera. So what I'm going to do is uh, that's fine. I don't need anything fancy. We'll do all frames and we will just do this. Okay. Okay, so now that we have both passes, whoops, both passes uh, rendered there, uh, we can go ahead and uh, import them into After Effects. So we'll just go over to Shameless Plug, After Effects, and uh, we will import. So, do, 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 do. well, I do not have my project. I had to shrink everything down and totally, oh, there we are. Totally effed up all my stuff. All right, so we're going to go to wherever I just was. That's our first camera. So import that. And I'll ignore the alpha channel for right now because who cares? And then I'm going to go to the other camera. And same thing. So now we've got uh, the A and the B. A is the left. B is the right. So I'm going to get the uh, A. And I wish I didn't have to shrink this down so I could actually show you guys kind of what I do. All right, so I have A. I'm going to drop that into a new comp. And so on our timeline, that's impossibly small. Um, doo, 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 there we are. This is ridiculous. All right, that works. Who cares? All right, so um, we've got that. And I'm going to drop in B into its own comp. OK, and you'll see why here in a second. All right. And then we're going to go back to that guy, and I shouldn't have closed that window. And we're going to put the B uh, in there. And we, we can just hide it, actually. We don't need to show it. So now, if you select the A, which is your left eye, uh, essentially we have to replace the red channel that is on the right eye into the red channel of the left eye. And the way you do that is there's an effect under channel uh, called, I believe it's channel combiner. And it is not channel combiner. So this is what happens when you don't plan these things. You just decide to make a tutorial real quick. It is called channel blend, maybe. And it is, I think. <laughs> uh, let's find out. I, for, uh, I was just doing this yesterday. I feel like an idiot now. Okay, it's not. <laughs> it's called... All right. Effect. I might edit this out now at this point. It's starting to feel a little stupid. Channel... Uh, channel... Set channels? There we are. It's called set channels. Uh... So yeah, you go to the set channels and <laughs> all right. So the source for the channel because you want the red channel of that guy is going to be SPBR. I, I, I don't know why I just named it that, and it is red, so it's already set to red. Uh, and then you don't need any of these other sources. So uh, as you can see, already looks pretty crazy right now. Uh, with the, the offset red channel, uh, I'm going to tell you that's probably going to be a little much. Um, but, but that's why that's we why have we the have the pre comp so that we can adjust the layer. So that's what we're, so that's what we're looking at right, right now. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna slap on my on my glasses, glasses real quick. quick for all I know, all I know that's awesome, awesome. Let's see Let's here, see here. You know what? You know what? Three glasses does not look so bad. So bad. Which is why you need why you need glassy glasses. Okay, okay. But there is a little bit of ghosting along the edges here. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock this window, so I'm still previewing this guy. I'm going to go over to this pre-comped uh, 
other eye, and I'm going to just kind of nudge back and forth until I see... There we are, right? Now that looks amazing right there. That looks perfect. So I don't know. I'm sure there's like a, a, uh, a formula for how much you nudge it over, but I don't know what it is, and it's pretty easy to eyeball it, and so I really don't think it's necessary to have it. So there you go. And now you've got... 3D Stay Puff, then it looks pretty sweet. I don't know if it'll look sweet once you uh, are watching it encoded. Excuse me. So I will try, I will play it full screen at the end of this video, which is exactly right now because my phone is ringing and I must go now. All right, go to c4dmodels.net or com. Actually, it doesn't matter. Same thing. All right, laters.